Hi guys, it's Belle here and I'm coming on with a bit of a scrap busting project. Now, this is not my idea. I've seen lots of people do this over the years, but I thought I'd share anyway and I thought it would be fun to just do a general crafting chassis video. So, as I've been doing lots of projects, I have lots of these thin scraps, especially from Tim Holtz papers. Because if you've seen my odd, the odd Toba 24 tags, a lot of them have planks on them. So I've been cutting papers down. I also just have a little paper scrap bag and I pulled out, they're all long strips. In fact, some of them are actually the strips like this one from the edge of scrapbook paper. And that one's got one on too. So I thought this was a great way. I pulled out some... Um, tea dyed paper this one I'd obviously used to be able to splatter some things on and I thought we would just make a kind of stripped collage um, should I work on the Tim Holtz one yeah let's work on the Tim Holtz one a stripped collage the only thing the other thing that made me think of this is these strips that I've been using and I'd said in a couple of videos that these come in Tim Holtz ephemera packs and I don't normally use them but they come in handy in things like this so I'm just going to grab strips I'm not thinking too much about it you could ink them as well I'm not even going to ink them um I just don't want to waste time I want this to be a you know it's a quick project you can do at night it uses up scraps and it gives you some a different kind of fun collage to do different bits with now some of them might have bits like that chopped off that's okay I'm just going to come in and chop that down and it doesn't even they don't even have to be all the same width that is up to you what you want which way oh, I want the orange so yes we're going to do this I love using scraps I love collaging at the end of a project I will normally take any little scraps and make a collage sheet I know I've done that before on camera oh this is so delicious um I might actually put that on top of there. And yeah, it's just a great way to use up your scraps. But normally they're little scraps or we rip them and things like that. But if you're anything like me, when you're trimming down paper, especially as in my October daily journal, my personal journal that I'm sharing, um, I'm using a lot of my six by six pads up because I've got quite a few of them that only have a few sheets left. And they're taking up space. So realistically, I kind of want to use them. Let's just cut that. Um, so that I've got one. <laughs> an excuse to buy some new ones. Because <laughs> some of them I've had for years. And two, it just gives me room on my craft trolley. So um, my little Halloween one. So yes, I've been using a lot of those, but obviously my pages in my journal are not six by six. Oh, should we have the dots or should we have the stripes? What one do I like? I think I like the dots. We can use the stripes on the smaller pieces. Um, yeah, they're not six by six, the pages. So I keep having to trim off like an inch, um, which is why a lot of these pieces, especially of the other thing are um about an inch wide but again they don't have to be guys don't overthink it here's another tim holtz piece that's quite a chunky one do we want this board over here maybe you can put it on top hmm yeah i might put that there all right it is bigger than i would normally use i would normally cut this down but Again, try not to overthink it. Don't want to be using my paper trimmer too much. And then the other thing that I thought would be fun to use. So I just had one of these 
uh, Tim Holtz numbers. Am I going to be able to find it? Yeah, this. This was just lying in my stash. And I thought that might be quite fun to use. I did think that. So we are going to use that too. Uh, you don't have to use Tim Holtz numbers. There are plenty of digitals out there with these kind of numbers on them. Um, I just have a large selection. Let me show you. So in this little box, I have lots of Tim Holtz numbers on here, which you can see these kind of numbers. In fact, I might pull that one out because it's kind of greenish and I like it. But I also have in here some um, ones that I have stamped on just tea dyed paper. Look, these are all stamped out. Or actually, this one here is actually from a printable that I um, then printed out on tea dyed paper. Like all of these here, most of them are from a printable. Just t on tea dyed paper, if you've got a printer and um, access to uh, print or access to printing facilities, if not, you can stamp them. So there's lots of options, but I actually thought they might look quite good. Just randomly put on here as well. Uh, I don't want that one. This one needs to be trimmed. Oh, this is also dotty. I didn't realise this was also dotty. And it just looks tea stained on the back. I don't know if I've stuck that onto tea stained paper or what. But we're going to trim that down as well okay let's grab a few others we've got this random one might even bring in the blue it's not very halloweeny but we'll bring that up here let's bring that up there so this is what we're doing we're just going to glue lots of these down and have a bit of fun let's start with that one up there let's just do that Oh, oh, we've got this long one. Now, um, this is fun and it goes all the way across, which, again, doesn't matter because it depends. Oh, we've got the green. Oh, I like both sides. Do you know what you do when you like both sides? You cut some off. That's what you do when you like both sides. Um... Yeah, I just want to use these scraps because they're all sitting here. I've got so many scraps. We all have, don't we? If we're making projects, guys, we've got a lot of scraps. It's just the way it goes with your crafter. Um, so scrap busting ideas are always fun. And you can even use digital papers for this. If you've got scraps of digital paper, I think I might even have one in here that's a scrap of digital. If you've got scraps, use those up too. Let's have this one there um, because uh, it doesn't have to be scrapbook paper or any kind of paper that you've got that you're crafting with it doesn't have to be that if you don't have that I really like this one so let's cut this I even quite like the border around it so we're going to use it with the border Let's put it here, I think. Or, oh, no, let's put it up here. Yeah, let's do that. And again, this is just from, oh, it must be from a scrapbook paper. So keep those edges as well where some of your 12 by 12s and that, or even your 6 by 6s or 8 by 8s, whatever size pad you've got, will come with a little bit on the edge telling you the name of the kit and that keep all of those guys love this oh but we could put that all along there too <gasps> let's do it let's turn it around so we get more of this and then let's just trip that bit and giving us another little scrap using up scraps making more scraps talk about the scrap scrap scraps and i really wouldn't think too much about what way round words and things are going to be because I will be cutting this out. I will be um, trimming it down to make journaling cards, tags, and I've had another idea of something else that I want to do with it. So I really wouldn't worry too much if I was you guys about 
unless unless you are just making smaller journaling cards because i did think this would also be a great project if you've got oh, which way round do i like that oh i like that writing i also really like no i really like the writing and actually because i like the writing i want to get rid of that bit so um if you've got index cards guys this is a great one to do straight onto index cards, especially as you'll then have lines on the back to write on uh, if, you know, if you're going to use them in your journal for writing. That'll be really good fun. Got a number. Should we just put another number? Just look how that kind of brings things together. And again, it's using those numbers. Um, if you don't have them, you might have stamps, as I said. You might be able to get digitals. There's lots of opportunity. You don't have to use numbers. The other thing I was thinking of putting on here is actually words that say spooky in that. But I think I want that for the other one that I'm going to do. So I don't think I want that for here. Oh, I found this. It's actually the address of the paper, the scrapbook paper, because you can see the other side. It's showing you where it is. But I love that so much. And I thought, oh. That would be really, really good to just put on here. So I'm going to do that too. So just use all these little bits, guys. Although that's then making you think, oh, I threw some of that away. And now look how good it is. And now I want to keep them all. <laughs> so <laughs> hmm, it may be making things worse. <laughs> but there we go. Oh, I've got some of this flocked paper. Now, this is not Tim Holtz, but... I want to use it because it was left over from my journal that I made. And I am not wasting a single small scrap of this paper because I just can't find this. I've honestly had this paper for maybe 15 years or more. And I just, I cannot find it anymore. I can't find another paper like it. Um, right, now this is one of those Tim Holtz ones. And this was the whole reason I started using this. So let's just use the whole thing on there. And obviously this doesn't look necessarily Halloween. It just looks grungy. So the next one I'm going to make, which um, I will show you, will be very much Halloween. <laughs> but this one, no, it just looks a bit grungy, which is fun. I mean, I know it's got some cobweb, but that can do as grunge. Um, yeah, it's just fun. Fun, fun, fun. Yeah, let's put that one over there. What's on the other side? We've got some of this and we haven't used that. We have used the orange there. Could actually put that about here. Let's do that. Let's do it. Um, so um, I really hope you guys are having a lovely October. Whether you celebrate Halloween or the spooky season or not, I just hope you're having a wonderful month. I'm thoroughly enjoying myself, if you guys couldn't tell, um, with my projects that I'm doing. But there just doesn't seem to be enough time in the day to do the projects. Watch what everyone else is doing and what their projects are. Catching up on everything. I mean, there just doesn't seem to be enough time. And obviously, I just need time to go out and have fun because it's spooky season and it's my favourite season. So, and this is some of that wood plank stuff that I've used throughout. But we've also got some writing. So I might just bring in the writing again because I like that. This is a weird shape. That's fine. In fact, let's just turn the writing upside down. No, I like it that way. It's fine that way. Um, but yes, so much to do today. Actually, we went for a really, um, uh, my partner's off. So we went for a really lovely walk, uh, in some woods because that's what we like. Um, and saw some deer. So you'll be seeing that. If you're following my personal October daily, you'll see some pictures of that in there. But it was just such a nice day. I cannot believe that it, it is the middle of October, guys. I really can't. 
because the weather at the moment is just so lovely and I know we're lucky because I know some of you guys in the States are really having an awful time weather-wise so I hope all of you are safe and okay with all the hurricanes and that um, so I just feel it's just lovely to be here and it's not only warm oh so this is some digital paper and it's one of the strips I used for one of my pieces but it's going to work brilliantly um, so yeah it's just lovely and warm and it's just really nice out there so it's nice to be able to still get out and walk and um, not have to take the umbrella at the moment I don't know how long that's going to last but it also means that so many of our trees are still green here so some are changing colour but I'm missing I'm really missing that um, massive change of colour that I'm kind of used to I'm wondering if so we have one of my printed on tea dyed paper numbers because I just there's just a little scrap here that needs covering oh and I was also going to say you can just add plain black guys you can just add a plain black scrap in fact I will I'll add one over here because I feel like that looks quite good too it just kind of breaks up all the other colour and again it's using up scraps we like to use up scraps but yeah I feel like I'm missing a lot of that autumnal colour that I'm used to because it seems to be the trees are green and then I go out and they're lying all over the ground and I'm like but but, but I didn't even see them change colour like I, I, I didn't <laughs> when did that happen <laughs> so wondering about down here actually I think I am I think I'm going to bring it in down there this is when you can start looking and thinking oh what's pleasing to my eye what needs a little bit of something else and this is also the reason I would suggest using something um, that's quite thin like an index card or as I'm doing tea dyed paper and putting it straight on there because if you're laying a layering up card um, it can get quite thick so you just want to um, make sure you're not putting it onto anything too thick already otherwise when you're putting them in your journals I mean I suppose it's fine if you're making a tag or a piece of ephemera that's not to go in a journal you know like a decorative piece but if you're putting it in your journals I really would suggest putting it on something thinner as backing um, normally I would like to collage on book page and then put tea dyed paper but not if I'm using mainly scrapbook paper as I am here look we've got one of these it's it's a little ruler piece I feel like that would look really nice um, along here maybe oh. yeah I kind of like it along there let's just do that because I can trim that so yeah don't use something really thick because it'll really chunk up your journal and whilst I make and like super chunky journals <laughs> I also want to be able to use a lot of ephemera in my journals so we have two little gaps one here and one here and this is what I mean you could put a word on there so you could put the word spooky but I don't know if I want to do that because I don't know what I want to use this for if that makes sense I don't know if I want to Let's see if I've got a longer number again. I don't know if I want it for Halloween or if I just want to keep it grungy in my stash. Let's have a look. Item number 22. That'll do. That will do. It's good as is. Oh, and the other thing you can add is obviously music paper. And I haven't. I might trim off just a little bit and add it somewhere. Um, so whatever scraps you've got, plain card, 
uh, card from, you know, whatever you're doing, projects, music paper. I mean, I actually want some of music on, so that one can get trimmed down and added to something else. And then we can have this one. And then I can trim it again. Like so. But this will be fun to add on somewhere too. Somewhere like that. Or somewhere over here maybe. No, that's too much like that. Maybe here. Oh yes, I like that there. Although do I. I like it there. It's going there. Just don't overthink it, Belle. What do we say about not overthinking? So, yeah, you can add some music paper. You could add book page. Whatever scraps you've got. I just thought it's fun doing something that's not in pieces or in squares or torn or any of that good stuff, which I love doing anyway. But right, let's add a little bit of this. It's also fun to just use these tiny scraps up. Especially finding a way to use those scraps on the edges of our paper. So we're going to put that on there. And I think this one, this will be done. Um, I'm just going to trim that edge. You can hear how thick and chunky that is. But we've got beautiful, um, and this is why I like using some sheets of tea dyed paper. Now, it depends. Obviously, I make my own, but I know it can be quite expensive if you're buying your tea dyed paper. But as I make my own, I like to use it to put um, underneath anything I'm splattering. I do have a splatter box, but if I'm just splattering generally one piece, I like to put some tea dyed paper because then it gets this beautiful kind of look. But look at that, guys. Doesn't that look yummy? Now I'm going to do the next one and uh, that's going to be much more brighter because I've got all of these scraps, proper halloween -y ones. And then I will come back. Okay, so I finished the second one. So obviously this is the Tim Holtz one that we did. But then I finished this second one. This is a larger one. It's got lots of different fun Halloween scraps that I have you can see I've added some plain colors too and I've added these are as I said the sort of strip at the top of the 12 by 12 pages and then I've added some of those words that I showed you that are digital so they're actually by Jay Lilo so I will leave that link down below now these I think look great but those among you may still be like but you said we can use them for ephemera but what kind of ephemera bell? So, the easiest thing to do with these, the absolute easiest thing, is to make them into journaling cards. So I'm thinking normally about five inches is good, depending on your journal. Let's trim off that edge too. And then, sorry about the squeaky, it's a very old one, but it's my favourite, so I use it. And then, sort of, oh, do I want to do three and a half? Yeah, three and a half for that one. And then, we could actually have three and three quarters for that one, which will leave us with a little strip, which we can add to another one. So there you go. That's how easy it is, guys, to make journaling cards with those. Now, obviously, then you can, I'm just trying to look, you can then add ephemera onto that. You could add a stamped image. You could leave it as is, round the corners. You can stamp. But you've got two journaling cards. And the other thing, obviously, you can use die cuts. Like, that would make a really, really fun die cut look at that guys doesn't make such a great die cut but there's something also i want to do you could make a photo frame so let's do that i'm going to cut it to about here i think that'll work well oh my goodness sorry if that's knocking the camera we've got this little scrap 
that'd be fun that would that could actually make um a little pocket in your journal or a belly band but we've got this and i'm gonna look let's say we want to use a photo in it let's see how wide this is first because again it would have to fit in a journal so that is four and a half which is good does that edge need trimming i may trim it down just a smidge to tidy it up now obviously i've backed this and it would be a waste of backing but <laughs> you can tell how thick that is but um you could have it as a floating uh one if you want or just not worry about that because it really doesn't matter i feel like this isn't straight like to my eye it's not straight and i think that's what's bothering me let's make sure so yeah that's definitely not straight okay there we go that's better so obviously i'm going to lose a little bit in the middle but that's okay so i'm going to take you've got a couple of options here i'm going to take um a die because that'll work well for me i'm going to make it almost like a polaroid frame um say if i wanted that like you could even measure what you want to see in the picture but you can make a Polaroid kind of frame. This frame's too big, I think. Oh, it might work. It might work. Okay, let's use that one. So I'm going to go and just run this through my die cut machine. If you don't have a die cut machine and you don't have square um, dies, use your craft knife. Draw on the back the size you want. Again, I want to make this almost like an old Polaroid. Um, so let me run that through my die cut machine. Okay, so I've run that through my die cut machine and you can see it looks like a photo frame, like a Polaroid type one. And you might say, but Belle, what a waste. You've done that and you've cut it out. No, round the corners, guys. Use a smaller square. Bring in a shape like a nice circle. And then you've got another little tag to put in your journal don't throw these things away and then we've got a picture let's try a different photo i actually have one of me and my partner let's do that let's cut this down because that'll be fun to put through there and yes uh i explained what all this was about in my um daily journal just in case you're interested uh, let's bring in some more of the leaves so we're going to cut about this much off and then look guys you've made your own fun picture frame with scraps look at that and you can still decorate it you can put words on there i've got some little die cuts some little pumpkins or mushrooms look you can add just a few few little die cut shapes and a word another little leaf up there maybe or we could bring in a mushroom and a leaf maybe not that leaf maybe another one of these but anyway i'm not actually going to decorate it i'm just showing you what you could do some little acorns would be quite cute actually so yes you can make yourself a little picture frame and it takes about maybe 10 minutes to put it together to use the collage strips it can take 10 minutes depends how many you're doing and then i suggest leaving them to dry for a little while before you then cut them uh and then you can do all sorts you can make journaling cards you can make tags and you can make a photo frame for your journal so there's lots of ways that you can use these obviously i've got my tim holtz one here that i want to uh, i don't know what i want to use it for and that's the great thing as well you can make a load of these and then just put them in your stash and then suddenly when you're making a journal you can think oh i need an extra card i need an extra something even one of these would make an absolutely beautiful like little specimen card or a really tiny photo frame but how fun are they 
so guys i hope you enjoyed that it's a scrap busting kind of thing use whatever scraps obviously they don't have to be halloween whatever scraps that you have um to do this with i think it's a really great little thing so let me know down below if you're going to try it out and i would love to know one of your favorite ways to use up scraps because i'm always looking for new ways that i haven't tried yet so anyway i hope you enjoyed this video guys it's just a little bit something different a bit of scrap busting and um possible ephemera making so thank you so much for watching and i'll be back again soon please do like and subscribe if you haven't already i really appreciate it and Yes, wherever you are in the world and whatever you are doing. I hope you're having lots and lots of spooky, crafty fun. Bye for now.